Hey guys, and welcome back to the Community Mod. In this series of videos, we do a social experiment where the community votes, we mod, and we see what we can come up with together. The best part is, when the mod is complete, the controller will be given away to one lucky subscriber, so make sure you're subscribed. Finally, make sure your voice is heard by voting in the comments section below. So to recap, in part one of the video, we discussed the idea of the community mod and introduced three other modders who plan to help make this the best community mod to date. We also voted on what color sticks and buttons we should use in the controller. And well, what can I say? I love gold! The look of it, the taste of it, the smell of it, the texture. I love gold so much that I even lost my genitalia in an unfortunate smelting accident. Gold absolutely crushed it. So with the voting out of the way, Ping Pong, it's on you dude to do the community proud. Now, before we get into the casting, there's one thing I want to get installed into the controller, as we're going to want it in there before we get the sticks installed. And that's the LED rings. These LED ring PCBs were made by PCBWay, who was kind enough to sponsor this video. Make sure you check out PCB Way for their new promotion, Stand with PCB Wares, where you can get a discount on your next order. Link is in the description below, and thank you to PCB Way for doing a great job with the PCBs and sponsoring this video. These LED rings are not an ordinary set. These are complete with a touch on-off sensor. Installing the touch on-off sensor with a set of LED rings is really easy to do. Just peel off the double-sided stick tape on the back of the PCB and install it over top of the microcontroller. Just make sure that you push the bottom of the on-off touch sensor against the microcontroller so that there's enough clearance for the start button. We're going to pull 3.3 volts and ground from the analog L slider and then we can easily route 3.3 volts and ground from the on-off sensor back to the LED rings. I opted to use some matching Kynar wire for the install so that the outside matches the inside. To hold the LED rings in place, I'm going to use just a dab of hot glue and we should be all set. You'll see on the C-Stick, this is the reason why we flipped the jumpers as the LED ring will now sit flush against the top of the C-Stick PCB. Overall, I think that the on-off sensor for the LED rings is pretty easy to install and works really well in conjunction with the LED rings. Now with those LED rings out of the way, let's get on to some casting. So before we get too deep into it, I've done a very detailed video on molding and casting in the past, so I don't plan to cover all my bases here. However, if you're interested in checking it out, I've got a card in the upper right hand corner. What we're going to do here is just do some updates to the process as it stands since the date of that video, and what I will say is my molding and casting process is constantly changing and evolving as I get more information and experience under my belt. While ultimately Ping Pong is going to end up doing all the casting, I figured I could share my process here, and to be quite frank, him and I have discussed many times in the past, and our processes aren't that dissimilar. So let's start with the mold box. I've been using these 3D printed adjustable mold boxes, as they seem to be perfect height for doing GameCube buttons. The best part is, they can accommodate a wide variety of parts due to their adjustable nature. The only other thing I need to add to these 3D printed adjustable mold boxes is a floor to the mold box. So I've been using either corrugated plastic sheet or plastiline clay, you know, just depending on the application. For standard face buttons, I find corrugated plastic sheet works really well, and for everything else I like to use plastilina clay. When using plastilina clay, it's a bit crazy, but I use this little mini rolling pin. It actually came from my kid's Play-Doh set. Yeah, don't tell them, please. And I find that it flattens the clay very well. The goal is to have your base to be as flat as possible, as it'll minimize future flashing. From there, I simply cut the clay to the size and arrange it within the mold box. Finally, prior to pouring silicone, it's important to make sure all edges of the mold box are sealed. To do that, I simply use a little bit of plastilina clay to make sure that it seals all the joints of the mold box, including the sides. A couple other things that are worth pointing out. For silicone to silicone mold release, I've been using Alumilite silicone mold release or Man Ease Release 205 mold release. 
Both are liquid-based mold releases and you would use a paintbrush to apply them. They both work really well and I would highly recommend them. Next, for silicone, both Ping Pong and I use Moldstar 30. Moldstar 30 is a great silicone to use for both buttons and shells and I would highly recommend it. I would also recommend that you use both a vacuum chamber to vacuum degas the silicone as well as cure it under pressure. Finally, the last thing I'll mention here is the type of resin that I've been using. And I've been using one of the following different types of resins for the various applications that I've been using. I've been using Smoothcast 325 for any of my prototype work, Task 9 for any of my shells or final button designs, Crystal Clear 202 or Epoxycast 690 for any of my clear applications. I provided links to all these in the description below, so feel free to check it out. But with all that out of the way, I think Ping Pong's getting pretty busy, so let's kick it into montage mode while he makes these buttons and sticks. Man, Ping Pong, you did an amazing job on these buttons. They look fantastic, and the community did a fantastic job choosing gold. These buttons are awesome. But now that the buttons are made and in hand, the only thing left to do is put them on the controller and see how Pucho's paint job and Ping Pong's buttons look together. Well guys, so far the community is absolutely crushing it. This controller looks fantastic, but now it's time for the next phase. We need to add some paracord to this controller to bring it up to the next level. So with that being said, your choices for paracord are as follows. Neon green and purple stripes, solid gold, shockwave, tree frog, chameleon, and gold and silver. Let me know what you guys want in the comments below. After five days time, we'll add up the votes and see which one is gonna be the winner. If you're looking for a way to get some extra entries into the contest, check out the Gleam link in the description below. With all that being said guys, I wanna thank you very much for checking out the video and I'll catch you guys for the next one here soon.